If we look at, for example, mode of action on, a, on an important pathogen like Septoria, how many new modes of action have been developed in the last 20 years, for example? Well, we had two main new modes. The strobilurins came in during the late 1990s. Um, they unfortunately went down to resistance from 2002 onwards and are no longer effective against that particular pathogen. We've now got a group being launched called Complex 2 inhibitors. They're also respiratory inhibitors but affecting a different site. And we know from uh, work that's been done already that they may be uh, at risk of resistance, although they're being launched in such a way that uh, we hope that this uh, will not develop. But uh, we're really very dependent on chemistry that came onto the market really 25 years ago for the control of this uh, particular pathogen which is the most important disease of wheat in northwest Europe and um, if some of the recommendations of the new uh, regulations go through we, we could actually lose the triazoles which are really the cornerstone of control of septoria in wheat at the moment. And when you say we lose the triazoles what sort of impact would that have on agriculture and on sustainability and your ability as scientists to maintain the performance of the remaining portfolio? Well I think talking just for cereals at the moment, triazoles are the cornerstone of any fungicide program and if we remove them from the program we'd really be putting intense pressure on the other chemicals that we can use um, and putting them more at risk of themselves being um, compromised by resistance. Um, in terms of the profitability of the industry, I think the triazoles make a major contribution to um, increased yields, increased quality, and they'd be very difficult to replace quickly if we lost them. I mean, is this uh, a question of the UK and a very UK-centric view of Europe, or do you see this being a, a more ubiquitous issue across uh, the cereal-growing nations? I think this is a Europe-wide issue. Um, it varies from country to country because we already have differences in the numbers of chemicals registered in different countries and in, in the regulations for their use. But on the whole, I think this would have a Europe-wide impact um, if, if we lost some of these core chemistries that are currently available to us. It's interesting you refer to some of these core chemistries. The triazoles, for example, is a class of chemistry. It's not at all evident now whether we lose one, half or most of the triazoles. Uh, because uh, th there have been some very, very differing and opposing opinions on that one. Um, would it be fair to say that if we just lost a few triazoles, it wouldn't really make that much difference? That's a, a difficult one to be precise about, but I think at the moment with septoria, if we talk specifically about septoria, which is one of the diseases that I'm most uh, actively involved with, we've really got two compounds left that are uh, very effective in the triazole chemistry class and if we lost either of those I think it would be um, potentially a problem it would certainly certainly if we if we were only using one triazole for uh, you know season after season control of septoria just from a biological and evolutionary perspective that that wouldn't be a good idea because it would put very intense selection pressure on the pathogen uh, so from your point of view, would it be oversimplistic to say that losing one or more of the key triazoles would be making a challenging situation worse? Well, I think we're already facing a challenging situation with some of these diseases. Uh, we're working in conjunction with plant breeders to try and improve the resistance of the cultivars to the disease, and the ideal solution at the end of the day would be to have you know, more resistant wheat varieties that needed less chemistry to protect them against the disease. But that's not going to happen quickly. Uh, that's another pipeline. Uh, the discovery pipeline for crop genetic resistance uh, takes time and effort and also we know that the pathogens are very good at evolving ways of getting around that as well. So I think what we need is to be always posing a puzzle for these disease agents and a key part of that puzzle is diversity of approaches and diversity of chemistry. So what's your real message to the parliamentarians today about this puzzle? I think the first message is take the views of these scientists seriously. These are not personal opinions, these are opinions based on science and on practical knowledge of crop protection. And the second is I think we need a proper impact assessment of what the implications of these changes will be. 
and as far as I'm aware this hasn't really been done systematically Europe-wide. We don't know what the full implications and consequences of these changes will be and it seems to me uh, foolish to put those changes in place until we know the result of uh, that kind of independent assessment. Um, to what extent have we as chemists actually created this problem? That's a very interesting question. Uh, obviously I think the use of some of the chemistry initially might have been naive in the sense that we exposed these biological agents to selection over periods of time without realising fully the implications of doing that. I think we're a lot smarter than that now and in actual fact when new chemistry comes to the market uh, careful measures are taken to try and protect its activity in practice by diversification and by mixing with other chemistry. So that goes precisely back to the point that we made initially that if you don't have that diversity, if you don't have the options of that diversity, then inevitably you're going to go back to where we started from, which possibly was a, you know, a single fix approach. Uh, a single fix approach has proved in practice to be fallible and non-sustainable. And going back to the start, um, we could, I guess, just have used resistant varieties. If they are available, the, the sad fact of life is for certain diseases, uh, one good example at the moment would be fusarium ear blight of wheat, the available resistance is very limited. We're searching for better sources of resistance, but it's going to take time and, and, and a lot of work to get those into commercial varieties. In, in other cases where we have good resistance, uh, for instance to some of the rust diseases, we know that over time that resistance itself can be eroded by the pathogen. Exactly the same type of evolutionary process can take place where a previously resistant crop becomes susceptible. And in those situations you have to resort to chemistry again to protect the crop. And again, turning the clock back, this wouldn't have been an issue before we had modern agriculture and modern chemistries. I mean, why, why shouldn't we solve this thing by going back to a more organic, uh, low-input agriculture? Well, I think you have a choice as to whether you're going to try and produce food and fibre and fuel as efficiently as possible from limited resources, and in Europe land is a limited resource, or whether you're going to go back to some false ideal in my view of um, low input agriculture where okay things take their own course but you have one fifth of the productivity that we currently enjoy today. That's an interesting statement but do you have any basis or data to, to base that, uh, that vision on? Well in my own institute we have an experiment that's been running for more than 150 years where we've been growing wheat continuously without any kind of crop protection or weed killers or fertilizer and it's true you can get a wheat crop off that year in year out the yields will vary depending on the pests and diseases present in any one season and on the whole they're hovering just below the um, global national average of about two tons per hectare now a good wheat crop in Europe these days will yield 10, 10 tons per hectare so that's the choice that you have uh, it's much less productive and the quality is less um, suitable for the markets that we currently have. Uh, you could go back to that production system, but I think people would need to be aware of the consequences of that. If, if you halved yields in Europe, the consequences would be quite serious. Um, we know that organic yields are lower than uh, the more conventional means of production. These are all choices that uh, we have to take and in the, in, in the context of global food security and current concerns about uh, food prices it would seem to me uh, not an option to go back to production systems which were much, le much less efficient than the ones we currently enjoy.